Writing a screenplay is a balancing act, and while all the components need to work together in harmony, the one component that can really make or break the script is the character. In other words, you could have the most beautifully written story arc and perfect structure to your script, but if your lead character is dull and flat, then everything else falls to pieces. Conversely though, you may have a story that needs work and the general pacing may be off, but if your lead character is compelling, your audience will remain engaged in the film regardless of the flaws that it may have. In an ideal world, you want to find that balance where all the components are working together harmoniously and one sure way to start out in the right direction is to first focus on writing layered characters with meaning and purpose. Hang on to the end of this video because I'm going to explain five tips for writing stronger characters into your screenplays or your teleplays. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. I want to get going on the topic quickly, but do stick around till the end of this video because I'm going to tell you about some freebies and training courses that I offer to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work and to help grow your business through something known as earned media exposure, which is basically free advertising. If you like what you see, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. And remember, I welcome your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. Tip number one, make your character likable early on. If you expect your audience to root for your lead character for the next 90 plus minutes of the film, you had better do something early on to make sure that you've earned that. Some screenwriting gurus stress this point above all else and for good reason. Without a character to root for, your story has nothing going for it. The audience needs to identify with someone early on and if your characters are generally unlikable, even if you may think they're interesting, it simply won't be enough to sustain say in a script. Oftentimes, screenwriters will write their lead character in a way that would be more suitable to write an antagonist. They might have a few snappy lines of dialogue here and there, but generally they feel like a negative self-serving force in the grand scheme of the film and often have no redeeming qualities of their own. Writing likable characters can be done in an infinite number of ways. For instance, it could be as simple as writing strong dialogue that shows how witty or charming the character can be and doing this will go a long way. Or they could be made likable through their actions. Showing a selfless act early on in the film will establish them as a positive force. And keep in mind, all of this can be done in the context of the world you are writing in and by no means has to paint your characters as perfect people. If you're writing The Sopranos, you can still make the audience root for Tony Soprano because you see the value that he puts on his family and the vulnerability that he has as a person struggling with depression. Within the context of a different story, Tony Soprano might be a flat out bad guy with no redeeming qualities. But in The Sopranos, he is surrounded by people that are objectively worse than him, and as such, he can still rise above them and show the audience that he is the character that is the most like them. The bottom line is, however you do it, whether it's through dialogue, actions, humor, or any other means, get your audience rooting for your lead as early as possible, even if they are a tragically flawed anti-hero. Number two, build realistic and detailed characterization. Character refers to the essence of anyone in your script and who they truly are on the inside. Is he or she a good person or a bad person? A fighter or a wimp? Character is the spirit of that person, while characterization is the quantifiable result of who they are. For example, let's say that you have an ego-driven female protagonist with a high-powered job and a chip on her shoulder. She might drive a big SUV to work, drink black coffee, and have developed a nervous tick. All of these points are characterization details. The details don't change who the character is at their core, but they are simply a realistic byproduct of who that character is 
and how they developed. Take, for instance, the character of Derek Vineyard in American History X. It's played by Ed Norton. While the film exposes him to be a changed man, he is still covered in tattoos that are a constant reminder of his dark past and life before prison. Writing strong characterization is important on so many levels. First off, a realistically depicted character will add a lot of realism to your piece. I can't count how many times I've seen the same generic antagonist in a film that had zero original characterization, which ultimately completely diminished their importance in the film. But even outside of just adding realism to the characters, it can also help you as a writer to tell your story more intuitively and dramatically. For instance, one of the exercises that I'll often use before jumping into a screenplay is writing a few pages of characterization notes on every character in the script. I do it quickly, almost as a free association exercise, and it's immensely helpful. I highly suggest doing this, as by the end of the exercise, you will have multiple pages of notes that will not not only give detail and meaning to your character, but also help to spark ideas for your story in other ways, namely by clarifying choices your character might make. This last sentiment leads me to my next point, which is number three, let your characters make decisions for you. Although it's very important to have an idea of your film structure before you actually do any writing, you also want to allow for the story to unfold organically and naturally, and the only way to do this is to give your character some breathing room. Rather than forcing your character into an arc and dictating all of their actions before even writing the words fade in on a piece of paper, try to let your characters make their own decisions that will move your story forward. This is something that is an important component to any script. As you're writing any scene, continually ask yourself how your character would react to the circumstances that they're in. Don't think about what another character in another film would do, or what you would do in that scenario, or you'll wind up with the most generic, boring lead character you could possibly write. If you've done your homework, and follow my suggestion in tip number two, you should already know your character really well and have an easy time judging what they will do next. You know what type of shoes he buys, the fact that he hasn't smoked a cigarette in three years but still gets agitated when he smells one, or that he falls asleep to the TV every night. You also know why he's like that. You understand the kind of upbringing he had and the fact that he got bullied at school as a kid. If you know all this, then you naturally have a deeper understanding of what the character will do in any given situation and how he will react to any given event. So go into your scenes and story with an open mind, especially in the early drafts. If your screenplay is going to be any good, it's going to need to go through many, 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 many drafts, no matter how good of a writer you are. So don't get too hung up on having a perfect character arc in the first version of the first draft. Let it unfold naturally, and in later drafts you can go back in and highlight the arc more once your character has shown who they really are. Tip number four, Give your character compelling dialogue. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but it really deserves its own section. Your character needs to have compelling, interesting, and original dialogue, and this doesn't only apply to your lead character, it applies to every last character in your script. Strong dialogue will tell the audience exactly who this character is within moments of them speaking their first lines on screen. We know where they're from based on their accent, how educated they are, whether or not they are introverted or extroverted, and so much much more. An immense amount of information can be conveyed with dialogue without even saying anything specific. A well-written dialogue scene that is comprised of something as simple as a character buying groceries could tell you a world about that character and ultimately add importance to what they are saying, specifically when employing the use of subtext. The odd thing about narrative film is that although they are completely fictionalized, we as the audience still want them to feel as real as possible. Even in a fantasy movie, we need to be able to relate to the characters and understand who they are on a raw, visceral level, and dialogue is the vehicle for achieving this. But keep in mind that compelling dialogue doesn't necessarily mean having a lot of dialogue. You may have a character that says very little, which in turn says a lot about them without the use of words. You may have one character that speech is filled with slang and another that sounds like a preacher. 
having characters that speak in their own voices is tremendously important and make sure that none of your characters sounds like the same person. A big issue that some screenwriters have is that they write all of their characters dialogue the same way. Ideally, you want to be able to cover the names of your characters on the script and still know who is talking based on what they are saying and the way that they're saying it. Tip number five, think like an actor and give your character a point of view. Actors always talk about finding their point of view. They need motivation for a scene. They need to know where the character was at the moment before they stepped into the room that the scene opens in. They need to know what their character is really thinking and feeling when they are beating around the bush and allowing for the subtext of a scene to play out. To some writers, these constructs may seem like a gimmicky tool that actors need to get in the right headspace. But I would argue that we as screenwriters really need to think like this as well. If you expect your lead actor to be able to play a character effectively, you need to write a character that will allow for the actor to use their tools to tap into the scene. But more importantly, do it for the sake of your own screenplay and ensuring that you get the best final product that you can. A character with a strong point of view will drive the story forward by giving the audience a through line to follow throughout each scene and each act in the film. We need to know where they are coming from and what they want in order to care enough to follow their story. Look at a character like Forrest Gump with an obvious point of view that dictates his actions. It adds realism to what he does and pushes the story forward from act to act as a result. Many screenplays that I read are severely lacking in this respect. It's obvious from the get-go that the writer didn't pay enough attention to understanding the character's point of view and making it clear enough for the audience to pick up on. The most common symptom of this problem are scenes that develop in a way that completely lack focus. I've read some scenes that could have been brilliant if they were cut down to a page or two, but the writer didn't understand the character's point of view, and as a result, it ended up being a cluttered five-page scene that ran in circles. One way to tell if you're on the right track is to see if whether or not you could write any given scene in one page if you had to. Certainly there are scenes that require many pages of dialogue, but before you make it work as an eight page epic scene, make sure it works in one or two pages as well, because if it lacks direction and focus, even when condensed to that length, then it's going to have major issues when extrapolated to be much longer. Now, this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, what's the most interesting character you've ever written? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,500 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you'll need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training course for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up in editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors that get you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. Now, 
I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is designed to get you free advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you and links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I've also done many other videos on filmmaking and video production, photography, and even screenwriting, and I'll link to those in the description below as well. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experience. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I personally work in. It's not a public group like my business Facebook page that I talked about earlier. That's public and anyone can see that. You'll find a link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.